Hi everyone and welcome to episode two of Equality and Diversity and today I'm here talking with Al Pick. Hi Al, how are you? Hi Saskia, I'm fine. And yourself? I'm good, thank you very much for asking. So we're going to be talking about equality and diversity in the music industry and your kind of the barriers you faced and overcome to get to where you are today. A little bit about you as an artist and what you do in the music industry what your plans are for the future. So fill us in. I'm sure we're all excited to hear what's going on. Fantastic. I'm not sure where to start. There's quite a lot to cover. So let's go jump right in very quickly. Yeah. Uh, it's, first of all, thank you for having me. It's very nice to be here. And very nice to talk to you. And I really appreciate what you're doing. And um, uh, it is very important to uh, keep the music uh, industry and the music business and, and music in general and this world um, all about equality and diversity and and yeah so yeah I'm, I'm I'm very excited and very happy to be here today so my name is Eyal and I am an Israeli British Jewish singer songwriter producer and multi-instrumentalist um, yeah, I always have something on. I'm mostly a guitarist, first and foremost. Uh, started playing when I was about nine years old. Started my first band, uh, The Brain Candies, when I was 14. Wow. And, um, in Tel Aviv, Israel, where I was brought up. Yeah. And um, about five years later, no, it was like four years later, when I was about 18, we sort of uh started getting uh, a lot of attention from uh, uh we won this competition uh it was quite high profile and then we had a music video that aired about eight times a day uh, a lot to take on at 18 suddenly you got your face everywhere and people are interviewing you and you, you have to tell your story and um and at the time i wasn't very aware of um, uh, my own struggles in terms of um, uh, I suffer from, from uh, uh, various uh, mental problems yeah. and uh, I've been uh, struggling with them but I'm happy to uh, say that I, I'm in a place of, of recovery and this process and this journey rather yeah. is quite um, uh, long but optimistic and that is my message basically and this is something I try to bring forward uh, with my music um, because it's all about um, what I can pay forward from my struggles uh um i suffer from uh i've got adhd yeah and um i also suffer from uh clinical depression and uh, anxiety so for uh, the viewers if the, if some people wouldn't understand what adhd means can you just explain for the viewers what that means yeah um so adhd set for uh uh attention deficit uh, uh syndrome disorder yeah, yeah. Uh, um it basically it makes you a lot more sensitive to um the world and your surroundings and 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 every sound and every color and um in many ways it's still a mystery because no i mean although there are certain uh, ways to go about it but the most important thing is to is to diagnose and realize what's going on because you find um just living your life a bit difficult when uh you're triggered by every sound and uh and when it comes to emotion as well it makes uh relationships a bit difficult mm -hmm. uh reasons and and you find yourself very vulnerable yeah um my way of channeling um and basically um given an, an, an outlet to 
these feelings and these thoughts always through my music and always through art. I started drawing when I was very little and then uh, when music uh, came into my life, when guitar came into my life, it was uh, pretty much all I was obsessed about, <laughs> uh, which um, later on had brought me to uh, England, to London, uh, to Britain, where I am living today and have been living for the past six and a half years. Um, what a story, what an inspirational story. Um, thanks for being so open about it. And I think just from listening to you now, it's like you've had to overcome so many different challenges and barriers. And, and it's kind of a bit like in, intersectionality where you've got more than one kind of barrier and one kind of more than one difficulty that you have to face and overcome. So I think that's really inspiring. Well, thank you. I, I mean, this is this is what I've got. <laughs> um, I'm very proud. You know, it's not easy to come and live in another country from another country and start again and not really know the language or the culture and, and immerse yourself in that. That's very brave of you to do that, especially on your own. I take I take my hat off to you for that. That's amazing. Thank you. In many ways, I felt because I am obviously very ambitious and um, and. Uh, some people would say that I'm a talented young man. You certainly um, are. I'll vouch for that. <laughs> thank you. Um, so that has opened many doors for me because um, this little thing here, it speaks. And uh, you can tell your stories in a way that's very focused and very... Um, they say that everything in life is all about the story and, and they say that the song is the the essence, like the gist of the story. So it just it just it's just easier. Not to mention that I was always obsessed with sounds and beautiful sounds from the radio and television and film, which is uh, all massive part of my life because I it's it's really hard to put everything together because I I, I have been doing quite many things in my career yeah. in terms of um, uh, releasing albums. I'm now finally releasing uh, music as a solo artist for the first time. Uh, and that's a project I started working on in the past few years. And for uh, the if they want to find your project, what's it called? Yes. So my debut album is called Mercury Retrograde. It's uh, out now everywhere. On all, on all the streaming platforms, if you want to go and have a look. Are you also on social media or any other platforms where people could find you? Yes, I'm on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, yeah, just uh, feel free to, uh, you know, to come say hello. And uh, if there's anything you, um, in my songs that, you could uh, that resonate with you uh, it always means a lot to me to hear that and um, uh, I'd love to discuss that with you um, yeah so what else so about uh, you so yeah. come to in to England to pursue your musical career is that your original plan so uh, it all started when uh, my old band, the Brain Candies, uh, we got an offer to come to London and make our second album. Okay. Uh, our producer at the time was uh, based in London. And um, we started this beautiful and amazing journey, but unfortunately, um, the band was already quite... Um, I'd say kind of worn out because we, 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 you know, we started very young and we were childhood friends and we kind of grew up being different people. And uh, we've always had that bond. It's like, and, and everyone who's ever been in a band would, would always tell that to you that it's like, no matter how pissed off I am with my mates, like once you get into this room and you you pick up your instrument and you just, you just start playing and like everything is just like it becomes it so away. <laughs> it, it's it's not important anymore because something more important going on right now. 
uh, which uh, yeah, which brings us to spirituality because I'm a very spiritual person. As I said, I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm reform, uh, reform Jewish person. Uh, and how's that been like in the UK? Because I know we have a Jewish community, but it's quite small, isn't it? And it's not very much talked about um, the Jewish side of the community in the UK. And I think that's one of the issues that I wanted to pick up is that representation that you are there and that's who you represent as well as being an artist, right? So, uh, again, I, I mean, okay, let's, I don't know what to start, I'm just going to start. <laughs> uh, Jewish music is obviously uh, a massive part of my upbringing and, and my identity. I'm the in-house singer and guitarist for West London Synagogue in London. Wow. Uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful community, and it's very inclusive. And um, uh, a senior rabbi, David Mitchell, is uh, openly gay, and um, it's so inclusive. And and we've got uh, lots of people converting, and and we were. Well, I mean, my humble part in that you know, beautiful establishments to bring music as they got music as an integral part of their practices and very proud of the music and rightfully so because the musicianship is incredible, just incredible. And I consider myself very lucky to have been working with such amazing musicians. Uh, I also got to play, you know, uh, you know, as part of my, this is, this is uh, how I pay the bills uh, uh, playing lots of weddings and uh, events in the Jewish community. Uh, a Jewish event had brought me to uh, uh, play incredible concerts and, and amazing venues such as the Royal Albert Hall. Wow, that's fantastic. So your community has been really supportive of your journey, you would say? I could say that, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I was, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty obvious that it's, so it, it's the, the, the community is strong, but it's like, it stays within the community and the rest of the world doesn't really hear about it. Yeah. Um, what I was going to come to you next, funny enough. That, that my next quite a lot of, uh, you know, both being Jewish and uh, Israeli in, uh, in Europe and um, in, in, in England is uh, is not necessarily the easiest thing. Um, there's a lot of disinformation. There's a lot of uh, um, uh, prejudice and anti-Semitism, don't they, and stuff? Is that what they call it? Anti-Semitism. Is it anti I have badly. Um, no, I mean because that that's the thing. When it comes to racism and also, I mean, uh, victory and misogyny, uh, um, it's very, I, I don't see the world that way at all. Yeah. So it's always like a mystery to me. It's like how people, you know, are, whether they were programmed to or, or just choose to behave a certain way. Uh, because I'm a pacifist and an artist and I'm a spiritual uh, man who brings a message of, uh, of peace and healing uh, through music um, as opposed to other uh, messages that are quite uh, loudly heard nowadays and, and have for a long time that are messages that are violent and and yeah I believe in unity rather than division yeah and um, there's no better way than music to to do that yeah. particularly oh, exactly yeah, with the internet and through culture like the world has become so you know united than, than, than ever and we should acknowledge that and also in a, in a, on a political and a spiritual uh, level um, each with their own practices uh, according to their beliefs and there's room for everybody and um, 
educate yourself whenever it, you know whatever it comes to i mean whether it's it's your politics whether it's your mental health whether it's your relationships because there's a lot uh, as 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 people and and again this is all this is all, these are all things i talk about in my songs and um uh and that's something that i'm carrying on doing uh, i'm working on my second album at the moment apocalypse and uh, a new single would be released so. oh i love the sound of that apocalypse that's really funny because yeah. i was at church last week and we was covering the book of revelations which actually has a apocalypse in it so that was kind of funny you mentioned that so tell us um i met you at tar yard education so yes. um, you were doing music production and songwriting then, right? So what have you been doing since you left uh, Talyard? So um, I haven't really left Talyard because I have made friends there and I have got, you know, I have had chances to work in the studios and collaborate with, with people and there's a lot of networking involved and, and I'm proud of uh, my uh MA and and being uh um accepted and and not only that i managed to graduate with distinction uh from that course and and to get a lot of attention from people who are absolute legends and um to, you know and and basically working with uh, some of your heroes uh professionally which is uh which is amazing it's a great opportunity and i was very happy with it um as a result of certain uh toxic relationships i've had in my life and uh a, a lot of the difficulties of you know living on your own in um in a country that is um um yeah, I mean, uh, not to be close with your friends and family from home. And that's uh, that's an experience lots of people uh, share. Uh, I mean, living in London, we both live in London, you know, and it's like, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So many young professionals, you know, you know, in, in pursuit of, of a dream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... And that's just also something that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm always writing about. There's a song on my album, "Nothing But Sound," and um, in the first couple of years living in London, I felt that I was making progress, um, allowing the guitar to uh, bring me to, you know people and places and and you know and allow me to to work and uh which is something that i'm thankful for um but at the same time when it comes to personal relationships i haven't felt as if i made uh you know close friends or people i could you know consider family um and it it felt as if I'm, you know, giving my heart out as like, you know, and, and, and could, I mean, uh, literally, because I'm that kind of person, I wear my heart on my sleeve and also I'm as rare. Aren't you? About what you do, you're very passionate about it and dedicated. That's definitely something I get from you a lot. Um, mm. It's your dedication and your passion for music. So yeah. to do this, if you was to come to the UK, say rewind the clock five years ago, six years ago, um, what would you tell yourself um, now if you used to come here or, or someone else was to follow in your footsteps? What kind of advice would you give them? Follow your breath. And, um, and, and pause. And, you know, it's like... Because there is the, I think, I think, you know what, I'd like to, uh, my, my answer would be, would be kind of, uh, I'll have it in two parts because that's something I would do beforehand, which is to make sure 
that's why I said breathe and, and follow your breath because it's all to do with, with meditation and mindfulness. It's a very powerful key uh, um, tool uh, for healing when it comes to um, any mental health issues and, and, and all issues when you think about it. Uh, because I just had my sort of the band had split up and that was part of my identity. It was my identity. I used to walk around Tel Aviv and people would yell brain candies at me, apart from, you know, even if they didn't had known my, my, my name, some, some did, uh, but still it was, it, it was cool to be recognized. And that was part of your, you know, thing. And you get to be on radio and television and you get to tour and um people recognize you in random places and and it's uh, it's nice although i haven't allowed myself then to really enjoy it because i was so anxious and and i had no i had to figure out what's going on which is the most important thing that's that's the first part of my piece of advice is to make sure like it's, it's housekeeping make sure that you're you know you all the, all the screws are tightened and because this is a this is a bumpy road and you need a you need a good car yeah. definitely a good car um and secondly which i guess that it's all connected but don't back down and don't give up particularly you know be mindful about um really evaluating your strength and your weaknesses and because some people are you know music is their life right and but at the same time they might not be i don't know the best performers or uh, uh, I don't know, they just enjoy what they do. So my message is to keep doing what you do and make sure you enjoy it. Great advice. Great the advice. will sort of come to you because the more you do it, the better you get. And it's all about practice. Um, you know, know, not you full up, completely obsessed with, with because what I did in my spare time, you know, since I was like nine years old, you know, wherever I went, wherever I was, where I was <laughs> went, <laughs> with you. <laughs> and I was always playing. Yeah. And and I was always I still um and it's something that, you know, with mindfulness you get to sort of sometimes ah uh, notice that because I usually have music in my head. <laughs> it might sound like a crazy person, which I am, but <laughs> we all are. And uh, it's good to um, uh, just be responsible for yourself. And mm -hmm. because as a person who's Jewish and Israeli, and if you know, I went down to my, you know, my, my heritage and family history and, and the um, even things that I've experienced in terms of persecution and in terms of uh, danger, that your life is in danger, you know, and it, it, it you know, it, it really does you in, in, in many ways. Yeah, it's very scary. If, you know, it's all, it's all trauma. And, but there are ways to deal with trauma. Yeah. Uh, so that's another the sort of part of my message that um, whatever it is, you know, it's like, um, I'll show you something. This is Mickey Mouse, right? Yeah, let's get on Mickey yeah. Mouse. <laughs> little Mickey Mouse and um, I have no rights <laughs> so they might sue me for, for showing you that or for making this because I made it uh, during lockdown I found a new hobby it's needle felting it's something to do with your hands and so whatever it is you play I don't know you play uh, not your phone though <laughs> leave your phone 
alone to put the phone down for a second. Yeah. And, you know, just try and be present with something that brings you just a little bit of joy. You know, whatever it is. Um, and, um, and kindness, you know, to yourself and to others. And um, because that's where it, it's all start. We're all responsible to our immediate environment. Okay. And, um, totally. Because, you know, um, I can go on and on about injustice and the fact that, you know, people talk about um uh, Kate Bush and her track uh being featured I think four times they have like four placements for the same track and Netflix number one series and probably the most expensive production uh, Stranger Things which I, I don't really watch it's not my cup of tea but um yeah um so it's like everyone's talking about it but they're uh completely ignoring the fact that they've um, um they did certain things they were a bit disrespectful uh, in terms of uh the um uh, memory of the holocaust yeah because yeah. they've used, i don't know if you've heard of it but they've used yeah. a prison camp it was a concentration camp and they also there's something with people you know with their arms were tattooed and and they encourage people to 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 do that and and that's something that my family has been through i'm sorry to hear that i'm so sorry and uh, you yeah, know it is it is what it is um but no one would you know come up and and, and, and point that out and say something you know mm. and i love bush <laughs> really <laughs> Bush. I really love Kate Bush and I, I had the uh, absolute honour and privilege to uh, still be a mentee uh, for John Kelly who's, who produced her uh, and told me stories about the first time he saw her when she was like 15 and it's like what an amazing you know I'm really happy for her and you know, I wish I wish songwriters today uh, would would write songs that are i don't know somewhat as good as one of the parts of one of her tracks because because that's different <sighs> such amazing songwriting yeah i could talk about it on and on and it's like this is something yeah songwriting could be a lot more heartfelt and 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 genuine and personal and um that's something that i believe in um so yeah i i you know want to join you all to and, and invite you all to let's to check out my album and listen to my music and stay tuned for a lot more so have you got anything coming up and coming stuff that you're going to be releasing or any up and coming events where people can check you out or anything like that? So um, it's all in the backstage of the in the making because there's the singles coming out, there's a future album to come out, there's an upcoming album, there, are, uh, there will be live shows uh, I'm going to go on a on a, a mini acoustic tour, and uh, just myself and guitar as a storyteller and and playing my songs. Um, yeah, so just uh, follow up on social media and. Uh, yeah. it be... So if anyone wants to follow you on social media, could you just spell your social media handles so people could find yes. you? So it's E Y A L space P I K. Brilliant. So if anyone wants to find out what AL is up to, just feel free to go over to his social media pages and check out what he's up to. And I'm sure you'll be able to catch some information on his pages. That's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for taking part in this second series of a series of around 12 talks on equality and diversity. Thank you for taking the time out and sharing your story, your vision, what you've been through, the barriers you've overcome, 
And I just want to say thank you so much. And I'm wishing you all the best for your journey. And everyone needs to keep an eye out for you because I'm sure there's some great things to come. So thanks again, Al. Thank you very much. My pleasure and God bless. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And you. Bye. Bye. Bye.